So when you're looking at IT outsourcing, again, I like to look at things in the covering your bases model. You've got internal processes, external processes, internal people, external people. It's listed here as stakeholders. And I think, too, that there's in different times and different slides, I've got the uh, internal and external perhaps in different places, but it doesn't change the overall concept of the uh, CYB model or covering your bases. It's still the same idea no matter how you draw it. All right, so the, the IT outsourcing is asking the question of which processes are good candidates for outsourcing. So they're internal processes right now, and I'm seeing that technology is changing. Uh, for example, in the past few years, one of the big changes has been in the fact that uh, bandwidth has reached a capacity that allows us to move towards cloud computing. Uh, processing has uh, reached a point where we can set up virtual environments. Uh, customers' bandwidth and access on different devices is almost ubiquitous, meaning our customers are almost online all the time. So given these changes, the way we do business today is different than the way we did business 10, 15, 20 years ago. And so the question then becomes these internal processes that we used to could handle easily inside the organization now might can be more efficient outside but or, or done more efficiently with technology, but do we have the skill set to support that? So looking at the covering your basis model, you might easily justify shifting some of those internal processes to become external processes. But when you do that, it brings up a lot of questions. Now, first, you have to decide which processes are good candidates, and then you have to think about how you can ensure the success of an outsourcing project. So we're tying together quite a few issues here because last chapter, or in chapter three, that you'll get to in another module, you're going to talk about project management. So I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of that in here. So you're going to think about project management. Well, if you were going to go through the process of outsourcing, you would want to set this up as a project and go through the steps of a project and treat it like a project. What's going to be the, the scope? What's going to be the cost? What's going to be the time? What's, what are these questions, the same questions that you ask about a project that you're trying to complete inside the organization are the same questions that you need to ask about the project of choosing the, uh, uh, the tasks that you can outsource uh, to an external partner. So now some of the models of outsourcing that we can use. One is called public cloud computing, and this is where you have a service provider or an organization that owns and manages the infrastructure. The users just access a slice or a share of the hardware. It's typically faster, cheaper, more agile approach to building and managing your own infrastructure. Think Amazon Cloud. This is, uh, you know, you've got this huge cloud service, and you've got multiple customers that purchase and use some of your um, your cloud computing resources. Sometimes the pricing arrangements are complicated. Sometimes there's hidden costs. Sometimes you have performance issues. So for example, an interesting thing, and I've always felt like this was an interesting relationship, is um, Netflix it runs on Amazon's servers. And so Amazon provides the service for a company that they are in direct competition with because Amazon also has their Amazon Prime Video services. And so they're in direct competition with a company that they provide the cloud computing environment for. So that's a very interesting relationship. So it's a, it's a complex arrangement. It's a complex situation. Um, and let's say that there's some new movie that Netflix releases and they are hitting Amazon uh, bandwidth and their uh, servers and um, then maybe at the same time Amazon's hit with a denial of service, the distributed denial of service attack and you may not be related to Netflix, you might not be video at all, but if your company is using some of their resources and their resources are taxed um, to their other users then you might experience performance issues and it might not have anything to do with your company except the fact that your technology is running in the same cloud environment with other people who are using up resources. That could be a problem. You could have poor user support. 
Uh, my brother works for, he's an administrator for an orthopedic surgeons group, and he has had a couple of issues that came up where uh, one provider would say, well, it's not our problem, it's, it's someone else's problem. We're, we are the, um, we're the software provider. There's, there's different people. There's a software provider, then there's the software host, then you've got your uh, internet connection, and then you've got the people that own the infrastructure. So he had an issue with bandwidth one time, and so he's checking, trying to figure out where's the problem. Is the problem with the software host? Are they having performance issues? Is it their bandwidth that's causing the bottleneck? And then he checks with his uh, provider who doesn't own the infrastructure. So he checks with his bandwidth provider, and they're like, no, it's not our problem, it's the infrastructure problem. Well, he doesn't have an account with the infrastructure people, so he has to go through his provider to get with the infrastructure owners to try to find out what the problem is. And it took a week for him to get this problem resolved because everybody's customer service was trying to point the finger at someone else. So you've got that you know, 90 to 95, 99% of the time, it works real good, but when you've got a problem, sometimes you've got a big problem. And it should sometimes just be simple. So the cloud computing environment, when we do outsource technology this way, um, what you, in, you typically have, you've got you know, your users who are just simply connected to the Internet. And then somewhere out on the Internet, you have these businesses that provide infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platform as a service. Now, you can read about all three of these in uh, the chapter to learn about them. But these are very important and very interesting uh, ways that organizations can outsource pieces of their technology. Years ago, uh, with distributed computing, we talked about client-server models, and you could have a, a, a fat client or a skinny or a, a thin client, not a skinny client, a thin client. And the difference in those two was in who was holding the data, who was holding the uh, visualization tools and who was holding the processing capability and some other things. And so you could divide those tasks across the client and the server and depending on where you put it, you would either have a client that was basically nothing but input output or you would have a client that handled everything and the only thing your server did was just perhaps store the data and act as a repository for the data but all of the processing, visualization and everything else happened on the client side. Well, today we have very different models. It's not just a local area network where you're dividing right here in house. Now you have the opportunity to have complete virtual machines, complete virtual servers. You can have a complete virtual network. Uh, your customer relationship management can be completely hosted in the cloud, just like um, one of the most popular is uh, Salesforce.com. Email tools, collaboration tools, these are all software pieces like Gmail and, and their suite of resources. That is software that is provided in the cloud that allows for collaboration and work together. So that's not on my machine. That's, on the, that's in the cloud completely. As long as I have Internet access and a web browser uh, that's got the right plugins and everything and it's up to date, then I've got access to, to everything because I've got access to the software that's in the cloud. Platform as a service, you've got operating systems that you can run in the cloud, different programming languages, databases, web servers. These platforms allow you to do things and it's all in the cloud. And so the cloud environment is, is, a, is creating opportunities where you can really think hard about what's going to be the best setup for our organization to create a good relationship with a partner, to create a good relationship with our customers.